Hello loves. So today we are on to another lesson. Lesson 76. I am under no laws but God's. I can't tell you how perfectly fitting this is today. <laughs> so let's get started. I am under no laws but God's. You have observed before how many senseless things have seemed to you to be salvation. Each has imprisoned you with laws and senseless, as senseless as itself. You are not bound by them. Yet to understand that this is so, you must first realize salvation lies not there. While you would seek for it in things that have no meaning, you bind yourself to laws that make no sense. Thus do you seek to prove salvation is where it is not. This is perfect because I know even for myself, before I accepted the will of God as my own and abide by his laws, you get almost suckered into following the laws of this world because that is how this world is constructed it is a whole dream that seems to be a seeming reality that has all of these laws that seem to be interposed on its people you know by the government by this world by our parents by our own belief systems that salvation is outside of ourselves and so here we're learning today that i'm under no laws but god's that even though I'm in this world and I appear to be a body and I appear to have all of these obligations that I have to take care of in this world, that in reality, we don't owe God anything. <laughs> that God doesn't ask us of anything. And so by choosing his laws instead of the laws of this world, we truly recognize and get to experience our freedom and then get to realize where our whole abundance and salvation is. It's inside of us. It's not in money. It's not in paper strips. It's not in cards that we can swipe and pay for things, you know, all of this stuff. So this is beautiful. So then, uh, to continue, today we will be glad you cannot prove it. <laughs> for if you could, you would forever seek where it is not and never find it. The idea for today tells you once again how simple is salvation. Look for it where it waits you, and there it will be found. Look nowhere else, for it is nowhere else. So if we find that we feel that this world is closing in on us and that it's really difficult, um, you know, in the position where we are in life, then we can always remember that it is going to be difficult if we think that we need to look outside of ourselves for the answers or for the solution to our supposed problems. But what we're being reminded of today is that we must look for salvation and the solution where it is, which is in our minds. And so if what we really want is salvation and freedom and to no longer be bound by the constraints of this world or the laws of society, then we must accept salvation. We must accept God's laws where it is and that is within us. So Jesus is saying, think of the freedom and the recognition that you are not bound by all the strange and twisted laws which you have set up to save you, pretty much. You really think that you would starve unless you have stacks of green paper strips and piles of metal discs? Hmm. You really think a small round pellet or some fluid pushed into your veins through a sharpened needle will ward off death? Ha! <laughs> You really think you are alone unless another body is with you. Wow, this is uh, quite on point, right? This is bringing up everything, you know, that this world is seemingly offering us as to what will cure us. You know, the world says, oh, you got to go get all your vaccines so you, so you don't get H1N1 and you don't get polio and you don't get all this stuff. <laughs> don't forget about lupus. And don't forget about lupus system. <laughs> all these crazy things. So we're being like shoved with these ideas of fear that we have to, yeah, like take these pills or these drugs or these needles in order to feel that everything is okay. And this is, this is not where our salvation is found. And we are not alone if we're, it is only our physical body that is present around us. And this is what we're learning to remember today. It is insanity to think these things, says Jesus. It is insanity to think that the laws of this world have any power over you or that they mean anything. It is insanity that, these, that thinks these things. You call them laws and put them under different names in a long catalog of rituals that have no use and serve no purpose. 
you think you must obey the laws of medicine, of economics, and of health. Protect the body and you will be saved. These are not laws, but madness. These are not laws, but madness. The body is endangered by the mind that hurts itself. The body suffers that the mind will fail to see it is the victim of itself. The body's suffering is a mask the mind holds up to hide what really suffers. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> the body's suffering is a mask the mind holds up to hide what really suffers. It would not understand it is its own enemy, that it attacks itself and wants to die. It is from this your laws would save the body. It is for this you think you are a body. And it's true, we can reflect in our life that when we feel that something has gone wrong, you know, we might go to a counselor. If we think something has gone wrong, we might turn to medicine. If we think something's gone wrong, we try and figure out all the ways we can get more paper strips and metal discs. Right? We are turning to everything outside of ourselves where we think the power is. Why? Because we feel that we need to protect this body. We feel that we need to keep this body safe. That once the body is healed, the mind will be healed. I remember I used to think this too, and that's why I was always in so much pain and I was depressed all the time. But it was because I was thinking that I was this body, and it's this body that I need to take care of and keep safe and, you know, supply for itself. It's backwards thinking. This world is backwards. There are no laws except the laws of God. This needs repeating over and over until you realize that it applies to everything you have made in opposition to his will. Your magic has no meaning. What it is meant to save does not exist. <laughs> Only what it is meant to hide will save you. The laws of God can never be replaced. We will devote today to rejoicing that this is so. It is no longer a truth with, with which we would hide. We realize instead it is a truth, truth which keeps us free forever. The laws of God are the truth that keeps us free forever, even being here in form, because we are still God's children. Magic in prisons but the laws of God set free. The light has come because there are no laws but his. I love an extension from yesterday. The light has come because there are no laws but God's. Hmm. We will begin the longer practice period today with a short review of the different kinds of laws we have believed we must obey. Wicked. These would include, for example, the laws of nutrition, of immunization, of medicine, and of the body's protection in innumerable ways. Think further. You believe in the laws of friendship, of good relationships, and reciprocity. Perhaps you even think that there are laws which set forth what is God's and what is yours. Many religions have been based on this. They would not save, but damn in heaven's name. Yet they are no more strange than other laws you hold must be obeyed to make you safe. Pretty much. So that just includes everything that this world has to offer and what Jesus is saying to us. And I think this is a big part of when he says, you know, sell all that you own, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. We have to let go of the laws of this world and let go of thinking that this world has power over us or that this world offers us something in order order for us to realize that it is God's laws that offer us everything, that it is God that has already given us everything, and we merely need to remember that by seeing that this world doesn't offer anything, 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 any longer, and it never did. This is a beautiful awareness here. There are no laws but God's. Dismiss, dismiss all foolish, magical beliefs today, and hold your mind in silent readiness to hear the voice that speaks the truth to you. 
Exactly. Don't believe me or even Jesus or the Course by telling you this. But your own internal teacher, the Holy Spirit, will remind you of this truth from within you so that you can know it, you can see it, you can feel it, and you recognize it with absolute conviction and certainty that it is so. You will be listening to the one who says there is no loss under the laws of God. Payment is neither given nor received. Exchange cannot be made. There are no substitutes, and nothing is replaced by something else. God's laws forever give and never take. That's an important thought there. God's laws forever give and never take. To the ego, giving means you're losing something. If I were to give all my money and things that I have to somebody else, then I don't have anything. What we're remembering is that giving is beyond giving these things a form right? Giving is an actual law that God abides by, and the effect of the giving is the receiving. So we receive to the extent in which we give, and God has given us everything. So when we receive what he has given us, now we can give everything to all of humanity in more ways than we can even conceptualize right now in our thinking minds. So don't even try, don't even go there. Just remember that God's laws forever give and never take, which means we're given everything. Hear him who tells you this, and realize how foolish are the laws you thought upheld the world you thought you saw. Then listen further. He will tell you more about the love your father has for you, about the endless joy he offers you, about his yearning for his only son, created as his channel for creation, denied to him by his belief in heaven. Let us today open God's channels to him and let his will extend through us to him. Thus is creation endlessly increased. His voice will speak to this to us as well as of the joys of heaven which his laws keep limitless forever. And this is how we bring heaven here, beautiful souls, and really get to welcome and experience our abundance is by accepting the laws of God from within us and remembering that heaven is in us because it is us. And by accepting this truth, then we literally do get to celebrate the joys of heaven here and now. We will not repeat today's idea until we have listened and understood that there are no laws but God's. Then we will tell ourselves as a de dedication with which the practice period concludes, I am under no laws but God's. We will repeat this dedication as often as possible today, at least four or five times an hour, as well as a response to any temptation to experience ourselves as subject to other laws throughout the day. It is our statement of freedom from all danger and all tyranny. It is our acknowledgement that God is our Father and that His Son is saved. We are His Son and we are saved. Ah, <sighs> So four or five times an hour, beautiful souls, are we going to be reminded that I am under no laws but God's? Let yourself to apply this to any thought of temptation, any thought of fear, any thought of doubt that this is true. Because this thought for today includes everything. It includes everything that we think saves us. And so, with listening inwardly today, we can all receive the truth that I am under no laws but God's. And as you do go within today and listen and experience that this is true, share with us, write it on the wall, let us know that you too are experiencing within yourself that God has provided everything, that God has given everything, that I'm sustained by the love of God and I'm under no laws but God's. <laughs> All of this is intertwined as one when we listen and receive the gifts that he has already given us. So you better believe that I will be doing this for the remainder of the day and I will share what comes forward too. So I love you all. Have a blessed day. I'm under no laws but God's.